CMS the Pusatar, otherwise known as Custom Shapes. Don't sound very exciting, but let's see what happens. So we'll just jump along to the cavalry docks and see here a shape that inherits the properties of another shape. Uh, so when they say sh uh, properties, they mean pretty much just the geometry. So here we have our star and we have our custom shape here. So we can just drag our shape into it. Now, if we just come into the properties and we can change the properties of one and they are mirrored on both of them. So if we change this fill, you can see it changes that as well. But if we also wanted to jump in, we can then override that and change that to whatever we want. And this is applicable to the stroke as well. And if we apply, say, some noise, you can see they're applying to both of it. I can just unplug that and then just apply that straight into the custom shape. And then we're just having that deform our custom shape. So just knowing that you can kind of override it with deformers and then you can override the, the fill and the stroke can be a good little thing to know. The example they've got is basically creating a shape and then scale it on the X to negative one so that it's basically a mirror shape. We can animate these independently of each other. The original moves up and down and then the custom shape moves up and down. This is just moving the position X and Y. If we wanted to animate them together like this, what we're going to have to use is a manipulator. And the manipulator can control the X and the Y and the rotation. And that's just like a general, um, a general deformer. And that's pretty much it. Exciting times. So I'll just run through how to create this and then how you can use the custom shape to make it slightly more interesting. So now we're just going to go through and create all our little lines and strokes. Every time you make a line, hit the S key in Cavalry and it will create a new shape. So as you can see in our scene window down the bottom, um, I'm just adding more shapes. If you're having issues with the pen tool, just jump up top and check the stability radius if you've got that checked and also check the close distance. I've taken mine down to zero. The stability tool can um, take a little bit of time to get used to, but yeah, just have a bit of a play with it. It is kind of, uh, kind of handy if you've just got a few internal things to do rather than uh, jumping back and forth between Illustrator or something else. Okay, so I have grouped all these shapes together, all these lines together, and we can just jump into here and add a submesh to our deformer. And with our submesh, change the level mode to all, and then we'll just change the stroke and something that we can see as well. Um, and here, what we can do is just change this trim. Okay, so we'll just keyframe that. This is just going to be super simple. You just kind of get the general concept. And we're just going to animate this as well. So I'm just animating this in reverse order just to confuse people you get the general idea. So just tweak that and see how you go. So obviously this, you can see if it's gonna, um, this is where it's gonna finish and this is where it's gonna start off. So I've just created a little bit of overlap there. And if you wanted to add a little bit of ping as well to it or edit those curves, do what you do. I am not being precious. I'm happy with that. Uh, so basically, if we wanted to come in here and you can see in my, in my original one, I actually had different colors, uh, different thickness strokes, and I also had um, different colors as well. So if I right click on here and come down and I go random and change this width to say one and 
five. Uh, uh, oh, well, it's actually applying it all together, um, which is not what I want. And if I click on my stroke and I add my color array, it's actually only applying it just the first color as well uh, in our array, which is not what we want. Okay, so our workaround for this is basically to, I'm just gonna pop our submesh out and I'm gonna remove the submesh from the deformer. And I'm gonna create a custom shape. And I'm gonna put the group inside the custom shape and I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing. So I'll put my deformer in there and you can see straight away, all those colors have come through it. Yeah, there we go. And we can just adjust that however we want. So yeah, for this one, I've just deleted that and started again. I'm just gonna go back into my submesh and what else can I do? Just change it to rounded. It looks like it's just slightly, slightly nicer. And there we go. There's a little animation and obviously to turn off the one in the background, just hide your group and it's a pretty simple setup. So you can just create something like that in a couple of minutes. Um, uh, yeah, I just feel like this technique can be used in a few other, a few other ways and 